Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's another home renovation run episode. In the first episode, you saw us in the living room and I ripped down all the coving, got rid of all the bits and pieces that I didn't want. It all came off really easy, but it did make a big mess. And then what I was gonna do after that was give it a good lick of paint all round just to freshen it all up and get rid of the pink living room. But as you can see, not a lot has changed since then. And it's not because I've been lazy, it's because plans have escalated. This is a 1950s house, so central heating in here was an afterthought. So bits and pieces have been added in over the years. It started with a Rayburn to heat the water, and that is still in the corner, but that's coming out. But the radiators were put in bits and pieces, so there's pipes everywhere. It's all exposed on the walls. And although it's not a big deal, it's probably been there for 30 or 40 years, and people just paint the pipes. Every time I walked into the room, it just annoyed me. So I spoke to a good friend of mine, Chris at CN Plumbing and Heating. I've done a lot of work on his B7 RS4, and he came around, had a look, and he told me a lot of solutions how we can hide all these pipes. For most people, it's not a big deal. It's just two pipes running down the wall. So I thought if we're gonna go this far, we might as well go the whole hog. So let me show you the pipes in question. So in the living room, it's pretty much the same as you were last here. It's still pink. So we took all the coving off and we found luckily that it's all plastered nicely right to a point all the way around. So it's gonna make decorating a lot, lot easier. No repair work to be done there. So the plan was just to paint this up, get it all nice and neat. But every time I walked through this door, those pipes caught my eye. It's a pretty normal thing just to paint them like everyone has for the last 30 or 40 years when you've got exposed pipe work. But for me, every time I walked through here, the OCD kicked in and that annoyed me. I've got this lovely eight plus metre long wall here and they just stick out in it. So I had Chris round and he said, chasing those in is no problem at all. So we're gonna bury these in the wall. We've got a bedroom upstairs where the radiator tees off that, comes down, a T at the bottom and we've got one radiator under this window, one radiator behind the couch under that window. So we're gonna chase all the way down and then a good little tip from Chris we're gonna take the skirting off and chase in behind the skirting, so that just makes the repair work a lot easier. You shouldn't have to worry about it so much behind there. When the central heating was first installed, it was powered by the Rayburn. The pipes are still there, but nothing's connected. The Rayburn's gonna be going. But then years after, we had mains gas installed. So another aftermarket piece of pipe work put in. This is the gas pipe. The gas meter's just on the other side of the wall there. And that goes up across and down to the boiler in the kitchen. And it also tees off and comes all the way along here because state of the art in the day, it had a gas fire here and we've still just got a capped off little pipe up there. So that's gonna be removed, so we don't need that anymore. We can take that out of the ceiling. And for the gas pipe, instead of chasing it in the wall, I think we're going to move it over here to the edge. So it's gonna come right in the corner and then once the ray burns out, I'm probably gonna put a false wall in there uh, with a little bit more insulation between next door just to future-proof it if we do have any noisy neighbors in the future. And so the fridge is out here because I wanted to get to this wall. I'm gonna take the dishwasher and that out as well because the other half of the central heating on the other side of the house starts by coming out of the bedroom here not the nicest looking piece of pipe work here. This is the first thing I noticed when I walked into the house was these pipes. And what they are, it comes from a bedroom up there, through the wall, into the conservatory, and runs from the top there down to this radiator in here. And then they added onto this, you can see there's some little T pieces there and there, and that runs through the wall back into the house again, back into the hall, and under the stairs, which comes out here to this radiator, which you've already seen. It's a bit of a mismatch of plastic and copper, and nothing's attached down, so that's all gonna be going. So that's why we got the fridge out, because that is on the other side of this wall. So instead of burying the pipes in this wall, making a big mess, we can just drill straight through, come out the other side into the kitchen and run behind all the cupboards. And for this one here, we're gonna chase it in. So it's gonna 
carry on where those pipes are, but stay this side of the wall, chased in, buried in the wall until the bottom. And it's just gonna pop through into the bottom of the radiator. So that'll make this nice and neat. The wall's gonna be empty. I'm gonna redo the wiring as well. So it's gonna be a nice, neat install because all these pipes hanging around everywhere has been driving me insane. So if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it all at once and the whole of the downstairs is gonna be nice and smart. So let's get taking all this out. Well, I've just come up in the loft to drain the tank. And I don't know if you can see that. But this is almost completely filled with silt or dust or whatever it is in there that the ball can hardly push down before it meets that layer. The whole thing is full of mud. So when I drain it, I don't really want that going all the way through the system. So I'll try and empty this out first, I think. I've got it all emptied out. You can see that top bit is the water line and there's the sludge line and there's the bottom. So it's pretty much full of silt. There's the radiators off. Just realized I put the table in front of the time-lapse. Bad YouTuber. Pull it all off. Obviously not painted behind them. Last few bits dripping out of this one. Got all the others out. Of course, not painted behind. And all the pipe work out. And this one all off. So we've got quite a concoction of every kind of fitting, pipe. We've got copper, we've got plastic, we've got press fittings, we've got compression fittings, we've got solder joints. I think we've got the whole catalog here, but these ones are going in the bin, ready for the new ones. And I've just had a special delivery. Look at that whopper. These are all our new radars. Get unpacking. That's the radiators all hung on the wall, all in their right places. Bit of a gamble going for dark radiators, but I think they look awesome. So they're all in the right place. I've done a bit of investigating on the back of this wall and it turns out the joists are exactly in line where I wanted them. So it couldn't be more perfect. So I've got that one on, that one on. Got the new mirror radiator on. So they're all gonna be flushed in as well. Everything has been put in the conservatory. This one's all ready. Bathroom is in pieces. New towel radiator is up and ready. So it just needs to be plumbed up to. And got everything uncovered up here. Ready for the boys to get to work. 
because today is race day. Chris is sending two guys down. So they should be here any minute. The guys have just finished off and gone home and I have been thoroughly impressed with them today. It takes a lot to impress me, but the workmanship that they've put into this build has been amazing. They haven't stopped since first thing and they got it all done in this one day. And now it does look amazing. The thing I was most impressed about is everything in the wall they've made in one piece. So there's no joins, no bends, no corners. It's all made in one solid piece, which is better for flow. And obviously in the long run, that's gonna cut down on any chance of leaks in the future. So now we're all flush in the wall, all the way down and it just pops out by the skirting board and it looks amazing. Let me give you a little tour. So we're all flushed in, level with the wall. So now this wall is gonna look so much longer with no joins in it. I can't wait to get it all smoothed off. The dark radiators look amazing. They've got their matching valves and then they just tuck into the wall and hide away below the skirting board. So if we do have any cracks or anything, it's all gonna be hidden there. We've just got this one bit of repair to do up into the ceiling. You can see where the old ones used to be. We can get rid of these clips now. We've just got those little holes to fill. And the old gas pipe used to come through there, down, out this massive hole. See the RS6 wheel there? Now the gas pipe is tucked right in this corner, so I'm gonna box that in, probably put a whole stud wall across there, just so there's no joins, no corners, and it's gonna look a nice square room. Where we cut the back out this side, they're able to plumb in without dismantling all the other side of the hallway. So that's all gone in perfect, and that is for this radiator here, which I love. The mirror radiator, I'd never seen one before. I had no intention of getting one, but once I saw this, I had to get it. And the pipes just tuck in and disappear into the wall. So when we're all painted up, it's gonna look awesome. So impressed with the guy's work, even to the point where all the clips lines up, every join lines up, every clip joins up. If I was to do plumbing, this is exactly how I would do it. Then we've got this chase. We had a bit of a problem coming up here because of the construction of the house, we found this huge metal lintel going across. Because it's gone from airy house to brick construction, so there's no problem, they just went round it. And again, this one here is all one piece. Both pipes and bent outside, so that only joins are when it comes out the other side into the radiator. So now we haven't got the horrible upright ones that went up the wall. It's got these nice tidy round and through. Upstairs looks just as good. Got the towel radiator all in, looking fresh. And again, all one piece in the walls from this elbow here. One piece all the way down, round, till they joined it to the old stuff. So their bending skills really did impress me, as you can probably tell. And then once all the repair work's done, it's just gonna be floating sitting in the wall and while they were doing that I spent the day taking all the upstairs radiators off flushing them all out with the hose pipe getting all the black gunk and everything else out and putting TRVs on all the upstairs radiators so we are a fully modern modern house the new gas pipe pops up and goes across and also they've disconnected that old gas fire that wasn't used in the corner and the central heating They've made this tasty little manifold up to go down into the wall. So I am a happy chappy. So as you can probably tell, I'm extremely happy with today's work. So the house is now at the stage where it's looking a lot worse before it gets better. But for me, this is gonna be so, so worth it. 
When I was up in the loft looking at the water tanks, I noticed a sticker on the top. It had the contractor's name and it had the date that it was installed, which was 15th of the 3rd, 1985. So that's when the central heating system was installed in this house, which was actually only a few months before I was born. So I know this central heating system has been here for 36 years, which means I know those two pipes running down the wall have been up there for 36 years and no one has even worried about them. But those two pipes and these two little bits up there were absolutely driving me crazy. I had the vision of what I wanted of all the smooth walls and now we are getting there. A massive, massive thanks to Chris and his team at CN Plumbing and Heating because as you can see from the results, they have done an amazing job. Even if I did have all the time in the world, I don't think I could have done quite as good a job as this. So a huge shout out to them. Next, I've got to work out how I'm gonna fill all these holes. All the pipes are clad in this insulation material, which is quite fluffy. So the pipes are set right back in the chase, but this fluffiness sticks out a bit. So I'm not quite sure what to do. I think what I might do is with all the brickwork and everything before you plaster, you always PVA it. So I'm wondering whether just to get loads of PVA to stick these in so the fluffiness doesn't come out. Or maybe get lots more of these clips and just put lots more in just to hold it all in there. I think I'm gonna have to do a bit of YouTube in to see what the best way to fill these holes in. And then once that's done, we can get on with the decorating. We can get rid of the pink living room, cut all the spotlight holes in the ceiling, finally live in this house that I've been envisioning. You might have noticed we've not had many videos for the last few weeks. I've been so busy here stripping all of this out and get it all ready for the boys. I just haven't had any time to edit up. So I've got lots of videos filmed for AutoShack, I've been doing loads of work on this amazing 300ZX, so there's a couple of videos on that. A recommission on an E46 M3 Cabriolet. Lots of work on an E28 M5. Got a B7 RS4. I've got loads and loads of videos, all filmed, ready. I just need the time to edit it, them up. So now we're at the stage that all the house is back together. I'm gonna get back on the editing and get the videos out to you guys. In between doing all the decorating, all the filling and everything else I need to do here. So I hope you've enjoyed this home renovations run episode. There will be lots more automotive content coming, but until next time, make sure you have fun. Oh, sorry.